I received the message. A 5MEO DMT trip report by 5NEO, posted to Earwood.org October 31st, 2017. Dosage, 40mg. Earwood note, the dose described in this report is very high and potentially beyond Earwood's heavy range and could pose serious health risks or result in unwanted extreme effects. Sometimes, extremely high doses reported are errors rather than actual doses used. So before I even begin to attempt this, allow me to make a few disclaimers. 1. I didn't want to write this. The idea of trying to put into words the experiences I've had with this substance is so absurd that you could only understand how absurd it is if you've been there. I know that's cliche, and a lot of what I'm going to say will be, and hard to believe also. I'm opening myself up to criticism here, and it's absolutely true and I don't need to embellish. I couldn't have made this up. 2. The doses of which I'll be reporting on, I've since come out to find, are far too much, possibly unsafe, and I do not recommend anyone trying it. However, that reason alone is why I am writing about them. And 3. When I took this medicine, I respected it. I set clear intentions and meditated before taking it. That is important and will influence the experience I have. Now, let's begin the fun part. I was in Mexico at a little gated community, where some shamanic medicine men practiced that I met through what I thought at the time was mere luck. They told me about this modern to ancient medicine from the Sonoran Desert Toads and that I could meet God. I was sceptical. I wasn't an atheist, but was definitely agnostic. However, as so, the idea of meeting this big guy in the sky piqued my interest, so I agreed to give it a go. We were in a beachfront mansion, and they left me on the upper floor while the shaman went to prepare the space in the medicine. Some time later, she emerged requesting me to follow. I obliged and entered what had become a sacred space. She instructed me to set clear intentions and meditate before we began. As she wafted sage around me in the space we occupied for the moment, I spoke to the medicine. I will respect you and allow you to do with me what needs to be done. I need to reconnect with the Grand Creator and my own creativity. And then, I meditated. I was nervous, but I'd never heard of this type of DMT before, and didn't really anticipate or believe what was about to happen was even possible. Just to add a little context to what I said here, for those that don't know, 5 uh, DMT, despite being somewhat comparable in effects to DMT, is actually substantially more potent and shouldn't be confused with regular NNDMT, despite both of them being psychedelic tryptamines. Okay, she said, and I opened my eyes to see the pipe was ready to go and about five inches from my face. There was no turning back now, and the next motions I made almost felt robotic, like I wasn't even choosing to do it. I was scared, but somehow something was moving me to the pipe. She lit a torch and held it to the pipe, and I could hear a crackle and she put it to my lips. Breathe slowly, she said, like sucking through a straw. I thought I'd gotten it all, and then, get the last little bit, she said. And so I did. I sucked one last time with all I had, filling my lungs as far as I could. I held it as she counted to ten. By this point, ten seconds in, she had to remind me to exhale. When I did, I saw fractals in the smoke and a golden yellow haze began to fill my vision from the outside in. This happens every time I vaporise 40 milligrams. I then laid back with my head on the pillow, and instantly, blasted off. What the shaman watched was me lie motionless with my eyes closed and a smile from ear to ear for 20 minutes. What I saw was a tunnel of light and colour that whirled around me as I blasted into the great void. Within moments, the veil was lifted and I'd popped into the anti-gravital void and was staring at a light brighter than bright. It was white if I had to put it in terms people understand, but there were other colours involved, and they were in motion. It was sort of like looking at oil on a pavement. There's a colour, but it's more than one. It's tough to describe. It's actually describing the quality of being iridescent, if you didn't know. There are colours in this that most people haven't even seen, and until you do, that seems impossible, I know. By this point, any shred of who I was had dissolved. I didn't have a name, a body, a mind, nothing. And to my knowledge, I never had. It was freeing in some sense, but I felt a desire to enter this light. Before I could, something had to destroy what was left of me. I had to die. I accepted that, and something struck me, as if I were a window pane and a bolt of electricity flicked me, and I shattered into a trillion of the most intricate fractals I've ever seen. And then, I entered it. It was love, foremost, but also forgiveness, compassion, joy, 
youthful, but also ancient. It was comforting and familiar. It was ecstasy. It was nirvana. In this place, there was no separation. It was complete unity with everything, and had always been that way. This was God. And I had received that message. Not through language or telepathy, but just inherently receiving the message that this was God, and that this is where souls come from and return to. I also had a vision of Africa. I believe there were other visions, but I can't recall them now. I just never wanted to leave this space. And then, before I knew it, bam, I was back in the prison of my body. But now, I had the message. This world we live in is false, a construct of our own creation. And I had learnt that God is in us and we are in God, all the time. I am you and you are me and we always have been. We are the stardust and water, the mountains and the beaches. And what we see in front of our eyes is no more real than the dreams we have at night. I'm no longer afraid to die now. Death is the beginning of the real adventure. What a brilliantly concise little report. This really hits the nail on the head for what the 5MEO DMT experience has the potential to thrust you into. It really is possibly the most effective chemical for obtaining God consciousness, feelings of interconnectivity and unity, more so than even DMT I'd say. Isn't it quite funny I'd say, for a lot of psychonauts including myself when you get into this field initially, everyone talks about DMT as being oh, the absolute most potent psychedelic there is and nothing else is like it or compares and when you go deeper and down the rabbit hole and you discover 5-MeO DMT and DPT and all these substances that sort of uh, shit all over DMT in a sense not saying DMT can't produce some extremely profound experiences and uh, deep non-dual states but 5-MeO DMT is just another beast I've actually never done it myself but the uh, amount of uh, things I've read about it over the years. I've literally been fascinated with it ever ever since I'm, I heard about it in, say, I think it, uh, late 2017 or, 28, or early 2018. And ever since then, it sort of changed everything for me. I was like, ah, oh, right, the DMT is only the tip of the surface, really, when it comes to powerful psychedelics. There's so many more out there. And even 5-amino DMT can be dwarfed by a lot of these research chemicals that are coming out, say, People say 5-MeO malt is actually even more profound and effective for realising God, uh, the nature of the universe. I really related to the part where he talked about, oh, I've gone to this space that he recognised as God or the universe itself, slash absolute infinity, truth, whatever you want to call it. I feel like they're all synonymous with uh, everything these trip reports uh, uh, <laughs> talk about. So obviously I feature all these mystical experiences and uh, I know a lot of them, uh, can be semi samey in a sense, but what I'm really trying to do is, is just show you how many connections and consistencies there are between all of these. And uh, yeah, fair enough if you're getting a bit tired of all these uh, um, God God reports in a sense, but that is really the focus of the channel here. And, and because I like to, I'm, I'm, I'm basically collating them all. Uh, and eventually, I'm going to do a video where I sort of do like an analytical breakdown of every single connection so I completely related to the part where he said this is where souls come from and return to and my very first ego death on LSD when I smoked um, weed on the on the peak and basically just completely melted and had a cos cosmic orgasm uh, felt like I had a kundalini awakening where all the energy from the bottom of my spine went up to the top of my head um, I didn't even know what the kundalini awakening was back then um, and I don't even know if I did have one, but every time I've uh, heard of someone talk about it and what it feels like, that's exactly uh, the thing that happened to me. And I went to this space where I saw it, it was genuinely like soul. It was like in the end of Evangelion, if you've ever watched that, where the souls are it's sort of like everyone returns to nothingness and everyone's souls are just swimming about in this infinite space and they're sort of um, going through this process of dividing and unifying. And that's exactly what I saw. So when I read this, I was like, oh, wow, <laughs> this is possibly uh, one of the most relatable reports to me, even though it was a tiny tidbit of what he experienced. But that's exactly what I, when I thought, when I saw that myself, I literally thought, oh, wow, this is, this is God, isn't it? This is the, this is like what's going on behind the scenes. This is the truth in a sense. And whether I'm delusional and whether it's not true it is another story, but that's personally what I felt and this other person felt. 
Uh, and that's really what led me on the road to becoming fascinated with trip reports and other people's experiences. Because when that happened to me, I was like, what the fuck was that? Please tell me someone else has been through that before. What, what, what have I actually just experienced? I didn't even know what an ego death was, so then that led me down that path. Understand what ego deaths are on a very basic level, watching YouTube videos and uh, reading sort of like the basic trip reports. And then the floodgates truly open when I realised there's a mystical experience section on the Eerowid, which is a lot of what I pluck from alongside uh, talking about uh, experiences that you guys have sent in. But the real bread and butter of the channel, uh, for the most part, has been this mystical experience section on Eerowid. And so many unbelievably deep connections between my experiences and people's uh, on any substance really which is funny because I had that uh, I had that exact same experience on what I assume was 400 micrograms alongside uh, the weed catalyzing it big time because let me tell you if you've uh, if you smoke weed on the peak of your acid trip it, it can turn it into a whole other beast entirely uh, and it just shows you, yeah, even though, say, 5-MeO-DMT is significantly stronger than, like, most classical psychedelics and even DMT, etc., that if, with enough practice and the right conditions and just your general reactivity to psychedelics, are you naturally resistant or sensitive to them, you can experience, like, in just a uh, just as profound state on, um, say, the, uh, the classical psychedelics like LSD and mushrooms. So it's not to say that the only way you can experience God consciousness, non-duality, truth, whatever you want to call it, absolute infinity, just through 5-MeO-DMT, it's just it's like pick your poison really, what works the best for you. Most, but Some people have a 5-MeO-DMT and maybe won't even experience anything at all. Uh, I've read some reports like that and it ties into the last report we did where basically you just, you just don't know how it's going to affect you really. Uh, that's why... Um, if, if you have an experience with LSD or something and it's like the most profound thing in the world then you go to 5 or DMT and it's sort of nothingness I don't think there's anything wrong with you it just means everybody's different and the way our brains process these chemicals and interlink to take us to a different state of consciousness um, it's all just relative isn't it really I'm not saying I believe that the brain is producing these experiences I think consciousness is producing the brain but that's a whole of a ballpark for another time. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and the little commentary, and I'll see you in the next one. What you seeing, lad?